Hi, good afternoon. I'm Tina Parks from the British Academy of Floral Art. And this afternoon, um, I thought I would talk a little bit about what we've been doing in the last couple of weeks um, with regard to the garden. So we've been working on our uh, cutting garden uh, at, at the Academy and we've been looking at developing the site at the moment. So it's quite early on. So we've just started really. Um, and I've had a really um, great meeting with the landowner, um, our landlord, Ed, and his wife, his lovely wife, Heather. Um, we've been discussing all the possibilities and changes and developments we're going to make down there. So we've got quite big plans, but what we're trying to do is take a piece of unused horticultural land and develop it into a garden, which has many, many challenges. I can, I can assure you of that. But really great fun as well. So um, I just thought it'd be quite nice. I'm just going to give a little glimpse of, oops, I'm not the tape on the board. So this is the garden plan here. So you can see it's got a lovely, already a lovely pond. That was part of the mill, uh, which is beautiful there. And we have already planted these beds here, but not quite to the path yet. We're not quite all the way down. So we're about to about so. Um, and we're waiting for um, uh, a very gentle, a nice gentleman with a digger to come out and dig this last part out so we can put our flower beds in, our cutting flower beds. And then we have a nice seating area up here which um, Ed has already bought the chairs for, which would be lovely. So we've got tables and chairs up here so people can have a nice lunch break or a meeting area. Um, and we're also thinking about putting a little greenhouse in at the top. We've got raised beds at the top here which I've uh, got one of them is full of spring bulbs already, which is looking really beautiful. Um, and then we've got another small seating area down here, which is on the second level. So this is on a steep hill. So this is the middle level. This is the top level. It's got an amazing view right down the valley, past the lake. And here we were having a decking area. Well, this has turned into a lovely pavilion. So I'm really excited to see that. So we had a look at the plans. And the plans look amazing. So if they happen, uh, they are going to be absolutely fab. So just chucking things on the floor here. So what I thought I'd do is um, think about some of the plant material that's out and about now and think about what we can use if you're looking to create um, designs from your garden. Now the beauty of um, growing your own is allowing uh, that you have access to plant material so you know what you've got and you know what you can um, use. So it's really good practice to try using all different things that you have in your garden or your cutting garden so you can see how things last, how they handle, you know, um, can you wire them? Can you uh, cut them? Can you put them in a hand tie? Do they need to go in, a, or will they go in Oasis? And, you know, a lot of things is just experiment, really. I mean, there's lots of books that are useful that you can have a look at and it'll tell you how to manage the plant material, but a lot of it is trial and error. So even if you've got a tiny, weeny little garden and you're just doing a little, a few weddings, um, or a few bits and pieces. It's just good to know, have a look what's out there. It's amazing what you can use, most things you can use. This time of year is challenging because they're starting to be some lovely new growth, but we can't use that because it won't hold up. So you're looking for things that are a bit tougher. So um, anything that's evergreen generally is pretty good. So if you take a wander out and have a look, see what foliages you've got that are evergreen, that are still green even now in the winter before they start refoliaging. So we've got, a, I've got a lovely selection here of bits and pieces. I've got, and, and there's lovely colours. So there's not much flower in my garden at the moment, but I have got some nice foliages. So I've got this beautiful Pittosporum Tom Thumb, which is really nice, really robust, really tough little hardy chap. Now my garden is really quite small here. Um, so I probably got the sort of amount that I could do for weddings. I could pick foliage to enhance my uh, flowers and foliage that I might buy from my wholesaler. But what we can do with this is we can just make this a little bit more special. We can soften the look and we can make it perhaps go along the more lines of the sort of wild look that's kind of trending still at the moment. So rather than the manicured foliages that we tend to buy. 
So another good one is the Hebe. This is a little tiny, short little leaf Hebe in a slightly sort of blue-grey tone, which is quite popular, really nice at the moment. I've got a little Pittosporum that's a variegated one. See him? He's pretty. Very nice and easy to grow. Easy, easy, easy. Tough little chaps. I've got this really pretty little Hebe. Isn't that cute? Again, with this lovely reddy purple edge, this sort of burgundy colour, and then the green on there as well. I've got a couple of really common things that you'd expect. So ivy is super, super useful. Use it for all sorts of things. So the Hedrahelix, he's really useful. Lots of different colours of those. I've got a little tiny Fetz Hedra. So you can see he belongs to the ivy family, but it's also crossed with a Fatsia, hence the name Fats Hedra. So it, but it's got that lovely robust, like you think about a Fatsia, it's really tough, really plasticky. And this is the same feel, but much more usable size material. So really great. The Fats Hedra is brilliant in the garden for large scale things, pedestals, that sort of stuff. And this one, the Fats Hedra, is perfect for the smaller wax, so smaller arrangements and little buttonholes, boutonnieres. Um, I've got, oh, I've got a little succulent here, a sedum. He's cute. He's got a little sort of brownie tone on him. He's got like a lovely gold tone and then sort of brownie red tone on the stem, which is nice. Um, I've got some of the uh, ornipol... Uh, uh, Odopolygum, I can never say that, it's the black grass, that's really nice, really robust, again really plasticky feeling, really good, really just buy this in the garden centre, a little clump, I put a clump in about two years ago and now it's, I've divided it a few times now and it's quite nice so I can take it, the only thing is you have to watch this because my pet slugs and snails, I keep for my hedgehog, because we have a hedgehog with a visitor, I don't know if you can see it in this one now. I don't think I've got one, but I've tried to pick really nice ones, but they sometimes munch down the side. So you have to watch that there's no markings down the side. You want to keep it nice and clean when you're using it for, for bread, wedding work. It needs to be perfect. Little tiny um, hookah, little hookah leaf there. Pretty. I love the colours on the back of those. That's nice. Um, I've got a hellebore. So I've got a few flowers in the garden. He's pretty. Now he's the perfect time to use him because you can see that the stamens and the uh, stigmas in the centre there, it's starting, see it's starting to swell now and they've fallen off. So all the little filaments have fallen away and you've got this pod which is starting to swell in the centre and that is the perfect time to use this one. It's going to be really nice and firm. It will last well. If they've got all the little filaments with the little uh, little um, pollen on the end, they won't last. So this is the best time to pick them for, for longevity. Um, I've got a couple of little um, hyacinth plants in the garden. They're super, super useful. So I've just put, pulled off a couple of pods of the hyacinth, little florets of the hyacinth. We don't need the whole flower because it's massive, but a couple of little pods are quite useful and we can use those individually. And I've got some little mascara. So I've got a little white one here, which is cute. It's got a little blue blush on it, actually. It's really pretty. And I've got a, a blue one I've already wired up. So that's quite nice. And uh, what else have I got? So that's pretty much my materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put one together. That is um, a very quick one. So the trend at the moment, or that we've seen a lot in the magazines, is the um, beautiful little uh, boutonnieres that have been tied. So just little bunches of material. Now that's great and it works really well and it looks really pretty. If we're dealing with a customer who's very environmentally friendly, it's very nice because there's no wire and there's no tape. But on some things we do need to wire and tape. It's about deciding what the, I, what the current, uh, the client wants. So whether they're really truly looking at the environmental issue or they're just looking at the look if they like the look now if they like the look we could use wire and tape to enhance the longevity of the material because the problem with some of these tied ones is that they just don't last knowing the right material is really really key and that's where you show your skill so really show your knowledge about what materials are going to hold how they're going to hold they're going to be worn on the jacket so they're worn on the jacket for gents on the um, left hand side 
um, and they're worn all day so they've got to take quite a lot of wear and tear and also it's quite warm if you put your hand on your on your on your jacket top there it's quite warm so um, you know it needs to be something that's going to have a little longevity because the problem is if these little tie bunches are done and then they flag you know it looks there's nothing worse so really using our skill to advise the client what we can do what will work if we are totally just tying it and bundling it making a little bunch effectively or what we're doing if we're using a few wires to support the flower longevity so that the whole thing's going to last well so it's really important to sort of find that out from your client as to what uh, their intention is really <coughs> so excuse me so if we wanted to use some of these little hyacinth, hyacinth bits, like I couldn't put the whole hyacinth in, it's way too big, so we couldn't use it, but maybe the client wants to include them because they smell so lovely, or there's a meaning to them. Maybe they've got them in the headdresses or something. So we want to include them in the boutonniere, perhaps for the, for the groom. So what we can do is we can wire these. So I've got some wires here. These are these lovely silver wires. Um, these generally tend to be the finest ones. Um, a 0.26 or a 0.28 is really super fine. It's one of my favourites. You can get a 0.22, but um, you don't see them very often these days. It tends to be 0.28 uh, that's the finest you can get. And I'm just going to put the wire up through the base of the head and up into the top. So it's coming out. It's gone right the way through. It's popped out the top. I'm just going to fold that over into a little hook like that so it's just folded over into a little hook back on itself and then I'm going to pull that back down see the little hook there just a tiny hook and then I'm going to pull that back down and it's going to secure itself into the base of the pod so it's going to tuck right down and just you can hear it just sort of grip and now that's not going to pull out and now I'm just going to use a little bit of tape so I've got the parafilm I like this I think that works really well it's a little bit um, cold this morning. I've just got it out of my workbox in the garage and it, it's quite cold in the garage. So really this needs to go in your pocket, warm up a little bit so that it gets more um, flexible. And this one stretches out for quite a long way. Can you see the colour difference between the dark and the light there? So it needs to go really light before you can use it. So this is the parafilm one. This is the one that needs to stretch the most. And this is the one that feels smooth when you handle it. I like this one to work with. And I'm just gonna stick it, literally put it onto the end of the top of the flower stalk. And what this does is two things. It does, it seals the moisture in, so it keeps the longevity of that flower. Now that little hyacinth pit is, will easily last a whole day, and um, probably two days. They're really tough little things. Some things are just are brilliant, are amazing. And I'm just gonna take the tape down the stem. So just a little way, because I'm gonna lose the wire so I don't need all the wire so what we can do if we're being super fickle uh, super economical we don't want to waste anything don't throw waste, extra waste in the bin just cut that one in half and then I could wire another one on that half of the wire so absolutely great making a bit more use of the wire so most of this I'm going to use um, on its natural stem and what I've done to prepare, oops, to prepare that is I've Put, I've taken the leaves off the bottom of the stem and just left them at the top. So I've got a nice clean stem that's going to go down, so it's going to look very natural. So can you see I've done that with all the foliage? I've stripped it right down. So I've got now sort of just a stem with a little tufty, effectively a tufty bit on the top. But for a couple of the leaves, like the hookra and the ivy, it's actually uh, slightly beneficial if you wire. Now the ivy doesn't need to be wired for sealing purposes, i.e. keeping it longer, because an ivy leaf will last really well if you give this a good condition when you pick it. So if you pick it the day before you need it, and then and then um, put it into water overnight, and then it's perfectly brilliant, ready for use for the next morning. So this one, what we're doing is this is a stitch leaf, a stitch loop, so basically, all I've done is I've taken the mid rib at the back, which is the main rib, the main line that goes back down the back of the leaf, and I've put the wire either side. So at the front, you get a very, very neat, that's not going to show you very well, is it? Very neat little stitch there. You can just see it's just sticking through the front, but only a tiny, tiny little bit. And then we're going to bring, if you put your thumb and finger on that so it doesn't pull through the leaf, you're going to bring both the ends down very gently and quite loosely 
So if you turn it over on the back, you can see that that's quite a loose, it's not pulled tight because we don't want it to um, pull the leaf. And then I'm just going to take one end and anchor it around the stem. Now we can cut our stem a bit shorter. And then keep both pieces nice and straight. You don't want lots of twists because the I just go around once to hold the stem to the two wires so that they hold together. But you don't want to go around loads of times because as you make a sort of thicker uh, point here, you fill it out. And again, just a little bit of tape. So if you stretch the tape out, and then pinch the end bit off. And then again, you're just going to wrap it around the stem. So that's going to seal the stem for you perfectly. So it's got green tape. Can you see it's green tape at the top? I've taken it down about three centimetres and then it's back into the silver. There. So it helps to blend this silver wire in so you don't notice it. Now the beauty of that is now that he's wired, we've got lots of flexibility. Can you see? You can really um, put him where you want him to be and he's going to stay put. So this one I haven't wired because I want to keep him. So it's not just sealing the stem. It's more that I've got now manipulation about what how how I want that leaf to be. So if I want it upright, I can. If I want it flat, at right angles, I can also do that with that with the wire there. So it works really, really well. So I'm just going to cluster all of this material together. So I'm just got I've got this hebe to start with. I've got some of this grass, lovely black grass. Let's go with two pieces, I think. Just going to make a little grouping. So I'm just making a little boutonniere here. I've got a little bit of heavy, uh, little bit of the uh, petisporum, tuck that one in. I'm gonna go with the uh, lovely, let's go with the mascari. And I'm gonna put the hebe in at the front. So I've built up, so I tend to stagger everything. So the grasses, I don't put them at the same height. I put one higher than the other. And the same with the mascara, you can see it steps down. Then that eye comes down into the centre. And the focal point is going to be right down here where I'm going to tie it. So can you see it leads into the focal then? So you're always stepping it down into the focal. So oh, the other thing I did have, which is quite cute, is I have got this pot of um, Sartivarians, which is really cute. I don't know if you can see those. But they're really lovely. This one's particularly lovely colour. Again, it's bringing the two colours together, which is nice. Um, and what I've done is I've taken one of the little florets of him, one of the little chaps, and I've put a wire through him. Let me just show you how to do that. Very simple, just the same as we did. Slightly heavier one this time, 32, because it's a bit more substantial. I've literally pushed the wire through the top of it. So it's literally through the top. See, there's the bottom there. There we go, and I'm going to just bring those two sides up. Just work them through, pinch them together, and then I'm just going to take that. And the beauty of that is that that again, that Sempervaria, we couldn't. Uh, sorry, the Sempervaria, we couldn't use it because it's too short. It's got no stem, so they grow. They grow on the ground. They you know, they go along the, the ground really effectively. So if we put it on a wire, it now allows us to use that in the boutonniere a bit further up. So, and the Sansevier is a really popular um, plant material at the moment with the wedding. So it's quite nice. How cute is he? And it's quite a nice one because they grow easy. So you have a little pot and it can keep, just take a few off at a time. Don't take the whole lot. And they'll just keep putting new babies up. So you get, it's a, re a renewable source. We like that. <laughs> So yeah, we've got him, so he's wired now, so I can use him as well. So let's see, I'm gonna bring him in on that side, and I'm just gonna bring another little one in on the other side, a nice contrasting color there. So can you see that sits in front nicely? And because it's tied, this is effectively like doing a hand tie, so it's just holding it together. Let's have a look. Oh, let's bring the blue down into the base there. And a little bit of this lovely dark on the opposite side. So I've got the red on this side, the burgundy on this side, and I'm putting this lovely dark black. Might just take a few more of those leaves off so it's a little bit shorter. Just want a little touch of that colour coming in underneath there. So it sets that off nicely. And maybe that little Santa Berry, that little um, 
house leek. They're called little common names, house leek. Put that one in up there. nice um little piece of um this is a sedum i'm going to strip a bit more of the leaf off it nice clean stem and then that side again a couple more leaves off here just to make a little tiny sprig of him this side And then I'm going to put a couple of leaves at the bottom there. So this was our hookah leaf. So this one's just going to tuck in. I'm just going to tuck in backwards. So that's the beauty of having it on a wire, because you can tuck it right round on itself and then tuck it up. So what that's going to do is going to come forward for us to cover our mechanics when we've finished. Tuck in underneath. And we're going to use the same of the ivy leaf. I'm going to fold that as well so that he can just give us a nice little mechanic on this side. I can tilt the head. There we go. And maybe that little Sansevarian right there. So all at the moment, all I'm doing is just holding it. I'm just holding all of those bits together. Put that in. Just side two. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim that all down a little bit. And I'm just going to use the... I'm just going to reorganise those two leaves. It's always funny when you use um, lawn, uh, the lovely grass leaves, they always want to move. They don't want to stay in the place that you put them. Just having a little play, whether I need that dark colour a bit further up at the back. Because it's a hand tied effectively at this stage, we can just rejig that. I can slide that back in at the top. Maybe it would be quite nice if it was a little leaf up there. Yep, nice. Okay, so I've just got a little, so basically all I've done is I've created a little tiny, teeny, teeny little bunch in my hand. And I'm just going to use a bit of the tape to tie that off and tape it together. Now, that's the beauty of having these bottom ones wide because you can push them up. So I've pushed them up so I can get in there and tape it. So I'm going to just tape that together. So what we've done is effectively like a teeny, teeny dyed sheath. Now this is quite neat. I'm quite neat. I'm a bit formal. So you could make it wilder looking if you wanted to. But can you see what I've done is I've just bound it in one place there with the tape round so that it's nice and firm. So it holds it all up. And now because these ones are wide, I can pull these down and arrange them a little bit so that I can get them to loosen that up. Now, if they weren't wide, it would give me no, abil no ability to do that. So the beauty of this, of having those couple of wide bits in there, allows me to just play with that a little bit to soften it. <laughs> I've got a bit of grass that wants to go in the opposite direction. I want to spend a little bit of time with that. I wonder if I could pull him through a little bit, see if I can make him. There we go. Perfect. That's better. Okay. So, <laughs> a bit of fiddling. There we go. Got a little cluster. So, it's, it's almost like a little mini Thai sheath. Can you see that? So, it's raising to a profile here and going down to the back there. So, and things are stepping in. Can you see that steps into the focal here? And then we want a little bit of return because what that does is it co comes down. You see that front bit's coming down and covering my stems effectively, my mechanic. Now I can tuck any wire that I've got out of the way. So I'm just going to cut it short and fold it back. There. So I've got a couple of wires there and a wire there. Let's get rid of those. 
So I'm just cutting those off and then I'm folding them back over into that central point. I'll show you a second. Because I don't want any wires showing. And I also have, I've actually wired a couple more stems. So these are a couple more of the um, lovely muscari stems there. Because I just want to thicken this up a little bit, the stem bit. So I want it to really look like it's got a lot of stems coming out. So I'm just going to use my wire to take those on. Just got two and then I can cut them to the right length in a minute. Just take those on and just take those other wires in so that they don't, you don't want any wire sticking out because it's like the last thing you want is it poking any of the fabric. So let's bring those back down as well so they can come into the mix there, brilliant. And that's anchored those in. And then that's just given us a couple more stems in this lovely grouping here. And then I can cut these down to a size. And, and I'm just going to finish that off with a, either you could use, well, you could use also, I've got wool here. So I've got so there's some, we could go with a nice dark wool, which is quite nice under there. I've got a burgundy otherwise, which would be quite nice, nice, nice with the colour. Uh, I've got a neutral, which is quite pretty. So this is like a sort of off, sort of like a beige, but it's got a pink in it. So he's that's quite pretty. That's quite soft, very, very neutral. Or I've got a green, which is always good as well. Green's always good. I do you know, I think I'm going to go with that neutral. I think he's quite nice. So let me just take a couple of threads of this. And I'm just going to bind this around. And that's just going to cover you binding and it's going to look like you've got a little tied bunch so I'm just going to wrap that around again just tuck your leaves up for the moment just while you're working just going to put one more little line of tape over that just to seal that together so I'm just going to wind this around So this is covering all of your mechanics. Let's just take that back up to the top. And then I can tie it off at the top then and you won't see the end so much. That's pretty neat. Now I'm just going to tie those two ends off at the top. You can tie it off on the back. It's nice. You could leave the ends showing because sometimes people like to see that knot. They like to see that real organic uh, sort of finish. Or you can take them, tie them to the back and then very tightly cut off the string. There you go. So can you see what I've done? All I've done is just bound it really neatly there, so it finishes it off nicely. It's always, I think, with the forestry about the finish, always making sure it's really neat. So now we can bring back down those end leaves that we've put in there, that, those two ivy and that lovely heuchera leaf and that little, that one, and we can pull those forward. There we go, and I can just rearrange. So there we go. So we've got this little cute little boutonniere. I'll take another close up photo so you can see it. It's very neatly done with this nice little binding underneath. So it just looks very neat and tidy. And we look like we've got natural stems on there, but we've cheated a little bit because what we've done is we've created some manipulation with the ivy leaf wired and the hookah leaf wired, this red one underneath. And also we've wired the little muscari because they prefer to have be wired so that they keep the moisture in. That sealing of them, of the stems, really helps to keep the moisture in. So then this one could be, so this one would be for a little gent. So this one could be then worn on the lapel 
So left hand side for a gentler. So ladies are always right. Just remember that. Ladies are always right. Ladies, left have to get, gents have to go on the left. But it looks really cute. It just is a little really nice natural bunch. So it's about having knowledge on the on your different um, knowing the plant material, really knowing your material, how long everything lasts. So lots of this is really tough and will hold no problem for two days out of water if you give it a good condition before you start. About using wire where you need to because you can use it to manipulate and you can use it to keep uh, longevity of material. Or if you've chosen all really hard materials, then you could just do it as that little tide bunch. But really, really sweet and it makes them look really cute. And it's nice when you are picking bits and pieces from the garden because you can just make them very individual and quite unique. Um, and you could just add a little bit of garden, garden foliage to even your florist foliage and just give it that little edge. So I think that makes a really nice little, little different finish. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you have fun. Um, just I'm quite pleased to find something in the garden to be able to make it with. <laughs> Um, so I hope you all, it might inspire you to go and have a little play, you know, go and have a little play, wire a few things up, you know, just have them on your side for a minute or two, you know, and just monitor how long they last, a couple of days, do they, you know, how well do they, do they hold wired, can you wire some things, so like the hyacinth pips, they will last easily two or three days, so yeah, it's really, um, it's really fun, fun to explore. Okay, so um, just to finally tell you quickly before I go that um, we have got our courses back opening. So the garden course is opening up for taking um, bookings now. Um, so Ollie will be having fun with this lovely garden plan. We've got um, plan to uh, have, we've got a whole, um, we've got two beds, two long beds that are going to be uh, for cutting flowers. Um, we're hoping to supply our little church, um, which is just near our venue, because they do a lot of good work. And, you know, the ladies buy all the flowers themselves. So we're hoping to supplement their flowers with our, some of our flowers from our cutting garden. So in the, in the gardening course, you're going to be involved in, um, hopefully, quite a lot of planting, because we've got lots to, lots to fill there. And also the ornamental grasses, we're going to plant those along the side as well. So it's quite a nice planting plan that you'd be involved in. And we might even get to the point of putting the edging around the lake as well, which would be cool. And looking at marginal plants and plants that need more water. So things like beautiful stilbees, which are stunning and lovely to grow for cutting, but need their feet in water. So it kind of looks at some of the different types of plants and what situation you have, trying to grow in the situation you've got. And also we've got our wedding course opened up as well. So we've got a Wednesday, uh, sorry, we've got a weekend wedding course, which is opening now. So bookings, we're taking bookings for that. And we'll be looking at all sorts of things, little things like this on that and doing wedding bouquets and all to, anything to do with the, the main wedding party, really. So the bridesmaids and the bride's bouquet and all those lovely bits and pieces. So we'll be teaching all sorts of things with the wiring, um, tying hand tied work which is very popular wired work and in foam as well because I want to show you all the skills and then you can choose which um, method is the most appropriate for each client that you have um, and the type of flower that they want included so we'll love to look forward to seeing you I'm hoping to we're hoping to um, have an, an open day soon um, in well that will be in June when we're allowed to open up again um, but uh, yeah, I, I look forward to it. We're looking, very much looking forward to seeing everybody coming back. Um, so our first class uh, is starting on the 17th um, and then we're full in. So it'd be lovely to see you all. And thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.